Hello my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. The roller chain manufacturing process begins with material processing, where high quality steel is chosen for its strength and durability. To make a roller chain, a punch press full steel from a giant spool using around 500 tons of force. It cuts shapes out of the steel. These shapes are the link plates that will join all the parts of the roller chain. The plates then were placed on the next punch press that makes two holes in each link plate. To enhance the mechanical properties of the chain, the punched plates undergo heat treatment. This crucial step involves subjecting the plates to high temperatures and controlled cooling to achieve the desired hardness and toughness. A multi-purpose furnace produced in Germany is employed for this purpose. Once the individual components are ready, chain assembly takes place. The link plates and bushings go into an assembly device a ram presses them together, they remove them, and place two more linked plates in. The parts after being linked together will produce a complete roller chain like this. Following assembly, the finished chain undergoes a series of tests to ensure its quality and reliability. First, the chain's breaking load is tested to determine its maximum load-bearing capacity. This involves subjecting the chain to cyclic loading, simulating real-world usage conditions. After passing all tests, the chain is meticulously oiled to reduce friction and wear between moving parts. This part shows the assembly of the giant chain for the IFTA, comprising a total of 229 links, each designed with a remarkable tensile strength of at least 1200 newtons per square millimeter, the chain's calculated braking force stands at an impressive 2,200 kilonewtons. Its precise measurements are equally noteworthy. With a length of 25.510 millimeters per chain, tailored to meet the lock's requirements. The installation process entails meticulous craftsmanship a task entrusted to the Kobo service workshop and turning shop. This establishment has been meticulously organized to ensure expedient and impeccable service to clients. Here, a range of operations, from shaft drilling to welding, is executed with a keen focus on professionalism and efficiency. The use of CNC-controlled lathes and milling machines guarantees the highest standards of Kobo quality. The sprockets and gear racks, integral components of the chain assembly, are readily available in stock and are further tailored and processed according to the client's specifications. The adaptability of the workshop, accommodating customizations based on drawings, allows for the creation of both small and large series. Notably, the workshop can work with diverse materials, including steel, plastic, cast iron, and stainless steel. The placement of the giant chain for the lock at IFTA is a feat of precision and engineering prowess that significantly enhances the operational capacity of this hydraulic marvel. Typically, the manufacture of these specialized Gauss chains requires a span of 12 to 16 weeks. However, with unwavering dedication and intensive labor, Kobo managed to accomplish the extraordinary feat of delivering these chains within an impressive six-week time frame. The lock at IFTA, a crucial hydraulic structure nestled amidst a flood defense between two distinct waterways with varying water levels, serves as both a guardian of water retention and a gateway for waterborne vessels. This intricate masterpiece orchestrates the passage of water in ships through its ingenious movable mechanism. The IFTA lock complex, positioned along the Twente Canal, holds the distinction of being a national monument since 1933. 
it fulfills the dual role of facilitating water management and fostering shipping traffic, a responsibility held by Reichswaterstadt. A pivotal moment in the history of this lock complex unfolded on the night of January 2nd to 3, 2012. During this time, one of the lifting doors of the lock unexpectedly plummeted, causing a significant obstruction to shipping movements to and from the Twinte Canal. Responding with urgency, a temporary lifting structure was swiftly erected. This makeshift solution enabled the first ships to navigate through the complex again by February 6th of that same year. Amidst these challenges, the resolute efforts to restore the damaged lock gate persevered. The restoration work, characterized by meticulous craftsmanship and unwavering dedication, culminated in a significant achievement. On March 26th, normal operations were triumphantly reinstated, signifying the restoration of the lock's essential function. Cold wound spring manufacturing involves the creation of coil springs through a process that starts with pre-tempered wire. In this method, the wire is fed through rollers and fulcrum pins and is coiled around a precision ground mandrel, forming the spring coil. That spring, a company specializing in spring manufacturing, offers a range of cold wound springs, including coil lift springs and tapered springs, customized to various applications. The cold winding process offers several advantages. It allows for the use of different material types, with coiling material diameters ranging from 2.41 mm to 16.26 mm. This process is particularly suitable for smaller applications where space is limited, as it can achieve lighter weight springs with increased travel and deflection. Cold wound springs are typically used in industries such as the automotive aftermarket, food processing, agriculture, commercial vehicles, government, and defense. On the other hand, Hot wound coil spring manufacturing involves the use of an energy-efficient walking beam furnace, a cornerstone of Bet Springs hot winding process. This furnace can reach temperatures of up to 945.5 degrees Celsius and is designed to move material with diameters ranging from 14.27 millimeters to 44.45 millimeters through the system in a consistent and automated manner. Bet Springs Hot Wound Coiling System is capable of producing a variety of hot wound springs and vibratory springs to meet specific project requirements. The process begins with heating the material to the desired temperature, followed by coiling it around a fixed mandrel. The spring is then quenched in oil and subsequently tempered to achieve the desired mechanical properties. The hot wound coiling process is particularly suitable for larger applications with material diameters ranging from 12.7 mm to 44.45 mm. These grinders are equipped to handle springs ranging from about 254 mm to 609.6 mm in length. Springs are securely placed in fixtures attached to a central turret, ensuring stability during grinding. The machine houses two large grinding wheels that rotate in opposite directions relative to the turret. Heat treatment process. Heat treatment is a pivotal phase in spring production, as it imparts essential mechanical properties like hardness and resilience. This process involves subjecting springs to controlled heating and cooling cycles, altering the material's microstructure to achieve desired characteristics. Wire ropes come in different constructions, characterized by their cross-sectional designs. Depending on their intended use, these ropes are crafted from an assortment of thick and thin wires. The wire-making process occurs on coils, with each individual wire undergoing strength testing to ensure optimal load-bearing capabilities. Upon confirming the wire's strength, it is wound onto coils. 
The assembly of a steel rope involves combining numerous individual wires, necessitating several such coils. These wire coils are then placed into a stranding machine, where they are guided through a stranding head. During this process, the rope is carefully coated with grease for protection. The creation of a steel rope involves the interplay of tension on the strands and the simultaneous rotation of the stranding basket. A trigger wheel aids in pulling the strands from the machine, which are then spun together to form a stranded rope. The resulting rope is subjected to thorough checks to ensure its diameter and regularity, either manually or with the aid of laser measurement. The final stages of production involve testing the completed rope's strength and security parameters. Once approved, the finished rope is wound onto a large coil, known as a ruby, towering up to 5 meters high. These coils, weighing up to 150 tons, are loaded onto trucks using special cranes and transported to customers. The hot rolling mill is a crucial component in the production of steel serving as the engine that transforms raw materials into versatile steel products used in various industries. This film provides an insightful overview of the intricate processes within a hot rolling mill, a collaboration between Dollar Now University and SSOBIA in Berlin. At the heart of the hot rolling mill is the process of plastic deformation of steel at extremely high temperatures, this high-temperature processing imparts the steel with the necessary properties to meet specific requirements. The primary objective is to reduce the thickness of the steel material, while elongating it into long strips that can later be utilized for manufacturing diverse products such as steel plates. The journey through the hot rolling process involves multiple stages, each requiring a profound understanding and expertise to ensure the production of high-quality steel. The process begins with the heating of the steel material in a reheating furnace. These furnaces raise the steel's temperature to approximately 1,200 degrees Celsius, preparing it for the subsequent stages. The reheated steel is then fed into the roughing mill, where a series of powerful rolls progressively reduce the steel's initial thickness of about 22 centimeters down to around 3 centimeters. This significant reduction demands the utilization of a powerful four-high rolling mill that consists of both backup rolls and smaller working rolls. The backup rolls, often made of cast steel, provide support, while the working rolls with smooth surfaces that can withstand high temperatures and direct contact with the material facilitate the deformation process. Throughout the roughing mill process, the steel reacts with the oxygen in the air, forming a layer of oxide known as mill scale on its surface. To prevent this mill scale from negatively impacting the final product's surface quality, the material undergoes a thorough cleansing using high-pressure water spray. This process removes any traces of mill scale that might have formed during the roughing mill stage. After the surface cleansing, the material is referred to as transfer bars and is sent to a coil box where it is rolled into coils. The coil box serves multiple purposes. It saves space, allows for temperature equalization across the transfer bar, and facilitates further processing. Upon exiting the coil box, the transfer bar is still incredibly hot at around 1050 degrees Celsius. The ends of the transfer bar are trimmed and any remaining mill scale is removed.
The transfer bar then progresses to the finishing mill, consisting of six stands configured like four high rolling mills. Here, the transfer bars, now called strips, are further reduced in thickness to between 1.6 and 1.8 millimeters. The process involves carefully controlled adjustments to maintain the desired profile and flatness of the strips. This precision is crucial, as the correct strip profile and flatness lay the foundation for subsequent post-processing stages. As the strips pass through the cooling section, the cooling rate is meticulously controlled to achieve the desired microstructure and material properties in the final product. The strips are coiled at temperatures ranging from 150 to 750 degrees Celsius, depending on the targeted material properties. Once coiled and cooled, the strips can either be sold directly to customers or undergo additional processing stages, such as cold rolling, before reaching their final use. U.S. Subaki's roller chain manufacturing plant, located in Holyoke, Massachusetts, is a pivotal production hub within the U.S. Subaki Power Transmission LLC, renowned for its exceptional manufacturing of motion control and power transmission products. As a subsidiary of Japan's Subaki Moto Chain Company, the facility boasts a legacy of crafting top-notch roller chains, conveyor chains, sprockets, clutches, backstops, continuous flex cables, and cable and hose carrier systems across a diverse range of industries. The facility specializes exclusively in roller chain production, upholding rigorous quality checks at every stage of the manufacturing process. From scrutinizing material certifications and enforcing stringent process controls to conducting comprehensive component checks, employing cutting-edge vision systems, and culminating in exhaustive final inspections, every facet is calibrated to ensure the highest grade products. Central to its success is the precision engineering that underpins the manufacturing process. The plant meticulously selects alloys, subjects them to precise heat treatments, and adheres to Subaki's exacting standards to achieve optimal strength, toughness, and durability in the finished products. This dedication extends to performance testing, where finished chains are rigorously evaluated for fatigue life, tensile capacity, and other vital attributes. The Holyoke operations manufacturing prowess is evident, not just in its processes, but also in its investments, the facility has undertaken significant expansions and enhancements, notably in heat treat capacity, precision metal finishing, and advanced stamping processes. The introduction of the Laser Express cell underscores the plant's commitment to efficiency and cutting-edge technology, reflecting Subaki's dedication to the long-term development of manufacturing capabilities. The sprawling expanse of MS's 42,000 square meter factory in Gaziantep, operating under the prestigious Sanko Holding, is a hive of manufacturing prowess. MST specializes in crafting construction and agricultural machinery under its own brand, a process that exemplifies the fusion of cutting edge technology and skilled craftsmanship. With a strong commitment to domestic production, MST's manufacturing journey 
is a testament to its dedication to pushing the boundaries of innovation and value addition. The company leverages the full spectrum of technological possibilities to create machines that not only meet market demands, but also set new standards in performance, efficiency, and comfort. Central to MST's manufacturing process is its in-house research and development, R&D team. These experts serve as the driving force behind the continuous enhancement of each machine produced. By harnessing the latest technologies, MST manages to establish its name as a reliable and forward-looking brand, not only within Turkey but also across the globe. The cornerstone of MST's product lineup is the Beko loader, available in four distinct models, and the telescopic forklifts, boasting seven variants. These machines are a culmination of intricate engineering and technical finesse, designed to excel in various applications. Through tireless effort and meticulous attention to detail, MST's experienced staff ensures that every machine stands out with its superior performance, reduced fuel consumption, heightened comfort levels, and increased power. The manufacturing process begins with the symbiotic partnership between the company's engineers and workers. MST's factory floor is a place where dreams of engineers take tangible shape, buoyed by the dedication and excitement of its skilled workforce. The fusion of technical expertise and unwavering commitment yields machines that not only meet industry standards, but also embody excellence. The manufacturing process at MST is a synchronized symphony that harmonizes various stages. It begins with the selection of top quality raw materials, followed by precision engineering and cutting edge manufacturing techniques. MST's machines go through rigorous quality control checks at each phase, ensuring that even the tiniest components adhere to the highest standards. A key driver of MST's manufacturing process is the deep-rooted connection with Sanko Holding. This conglomerate's international clout and intrinsic awareness of significance lend added impetus to MST's operations. The synergy between MST and Sanko Holding creates a dynamic environment that spurs innovation and a relentless pursuit of excellence. MST's commitment to progress is a daily journey, marked by continuous improvement and innovation. Every day dawns with renewed vigor, driving the team to push the envelope and redefine industry norms. This pursuit of excellence is not only a testament to their dedication, but also a demonstration of their responsibility towards customers and the broader society. From the smallest nuts and bolts to the most complex mechanisms, MST's manufacturing process is underpinned by attention to detail. They understand that perfection lies in the sum of its parts, and therefore each component is carefully crafted to ensure robustness, durability, and energy efficiency. MST's commitment to delivering impeccable products is evident in every meticulously assembled machine.